Continuing with the theme of human rights, black lesbians and transgender men in South African townships and rural areas face an overwhelming climate of discrimination and violence. It's despite protections promised to them in the country's constitution. Well, to speak to us about the issues affecting the LGBTIQ plus community, we are joined by the executive director of Amandla.mobi, Kogeto Moyedi, and Leo Ngosi, who works in the fintech space. Good evening to both of you, and thank you so much for your time. Firstly, your own reflections in terms of where we are in affording those who are members of the LGBTIQ plus communities full access to their rights as South Africans. Um, Koketsu, let me begin with you. So I think ultimately um, it is not a matter of what the rights people are afforded, you know. Um, it fundamentally comes down to what people love and the practices that people are given. Because many people can oppose the manifestation of certain things, whether violence, whether hate, hate crimes, and so many other things, and homophobia, but ultimately it becomes, what do we enable in our daily interactions with people, right? Um, how are we enabling a world in which certain things exist? And yeah, I think that's where we act. We, so many people can claim to not be homophobic, but still enable so much violence, so much crime, mm -hmm. which intersects directly with class, race, gender, and so many other inequalities we see in this country that existed even way before the pandemic. Mm. Leo, are we getting any closer to creating a society where um, members of the LGBTIQ plus community are safer than what the situation has been previously. You know, I remember a time in South Africa where we'd have constant headlines of people being attacked um, just for being able to speak out loudly about their gender. Um, you know, it's we are moving very slow, uh, in my opinion. I think it's a matter of, as Goka to say, it's, it's it's just it's about education and implementation of you know the the, the rights that we we have. Um, but in implementation, it's it's not safer. Um, the attacks are still happening. Um, you see it every other day that somebody has been attacked just for being who they are. So yeah, it's it's not moving as fast as it should, which is quite concerning. What do you think the causes of this lack of change are, Gogezo, despite what is contained in our constitution? I think there's many, many reasons. And fundamentally, I think once we come to the systemic stuff, once we come to the violence, right, we often absolve ourselves of it, that violence. And we think that, you know, the violence enacted by a certain people is separate to the violence of the workplace that is not enabling, of the many, many other places that are so, so deeply prejudiced and have been built and designed in that way. Mm. So I think it is a, both a matter of what are the systems that are at play and also what are the day-to-day -day interactions that enable the violence to happen, right? And it starts with the things that are considered to be small, just one example, you know, the little joke about it's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve, right? Mm -hmm. The idea of when two women are together, who is the man or the woman, for example, mm -hmm. you know? Um, all of that, all of that enables violence. It fundamentally comes down to when a person is not being enabled to be who they are in the workplace. When a person is enabled to not be married because somebody can justify um, not marrying them at home affairs because, you know, this is something I can absolve myself from. These are all instances that enable and are part of the violence we see all around us at a day-to-day -day level. And again, I go back to, we can take it down to how this queerness intersects with issues of class, race, gender, and so many other inequalities that exist in our society and are part of the fundamental infrastructure that is our society. 
now, do, do, uh, sorry, Leo, do you believe that that marginalization is exacerbated simply because of, of the intersection of all of these issues that Goketo has, has spoken about? Absolutely. I mean, like, I mean, from a personal perspective, I, I am privileged enough to live in an area where I can be safer. I mean, looking back when I was growing up, it was not a place where you could just be who you are, right? Like, it's not a place where, as a perceived man, you can walk around with blue hair and it's okay, right? It's, it's all of these things that it starts from the language, it goes down to the jokes, it goes down to, um, you know, apologizing, for instance, like, no, they're toughening you up, all of those aspects that have been allowed to enable people to treat us in a different manner, right? Mm -hmm. For me, the mere fact that we have to say queer rights are human rights, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's human rights. Like, I'm a human first before anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's that uh, conversation that needs to happen or still needs to be pushed down that is not happening. One of the things that, that I'm also hearing is being able to challenge the hierarchies that have been created in our society. And perhaps, you know, l coming from a society that is highly patriarchal, um, that in and of itself challenges, means challenging everything that does not fit into the prism of the alpha male, Kokezo. Absolutely. And I would add to that, you know, we forget how intertwined um, patriarchy, capitalism, and many other isms are, right? So think about, I'm a queer person, if, and I'm a public transport user, but if I was using a mobility aid, such as a wheelchair or any other device, my life would be fundamentally different because the bus I catch at my bus stop is not designed, would not be designed for someone like me, right? And add to the layers, you know, this, the, your queerness and, you know, whatever else may come into being. Your class, where you're getting off, where you're going to, and your race. Um, that has a whole different meaning for that single bus ride in your own experience. And so, yes, patriarchy and so many, many, Many issues are at the heart of this. We cannot let capitalism get a free ride on this. And of mm. course, the two are deeply intertwined. And the implications we live in every single day, whether it is from where you can exist and you can't exist, whether it is the messages you are getting on a day-to-day -day basis. So think about how somebody will tell you that, um, you know, teaching the idea that, you know, you can have um, gender queer relationships or gender diverse relationships, right? And call it like an African and so many other things and label in many other ways. And tell you that you are forcing homosexuality on children, whereas everyday children mm. are being engaged on the fact that, you know, men and women do this and so on. And we don't call that forcing heteronormativity on children, you know? And it's all of that, it's all of that, the little ways, the so-called little ways in which we define what is so-called normal and what isn't in our daily interactions, our daily practices that are not separate from the systems that we are talking about, right? Patriarchy does not in, exist in and of itself. Patriarchy is upheld and practiced by people who both benefit and gain from it in some way or another. Likewise with capitalism, and we can take it to white supremacy too. Uh, Leo, you, Koketo, earlier mentioned the issue of socialization and how important that process is in terms of the kind of world views that we will ultimately form and what we see as acceptable and unacceptable. Do you think that there has been a genuine process and journey of learning and perhaps unlearning in, in this country? Um, I think there okay. has been, and it's mostly on a personal level. I think more, more and more people are starting to unlearn certain things, but it, it hasn't been something that has been pushed by the systems that we subscribe to. I mean, for me, looking at only home affairs is only... Um, going to be adding the third gender later this year or some point, but it, it doesn't reflect 
the constitution that we have that says, you know, we protect everybody within this country. So, yeah. Mm. And, and, and would you want to see uh, a more aggressive stance, especially in terms of policy from government, that they appreciate the extent of this conversation and um, the way in which it needs to play out, perhaps even as something as basic as we've seen in some uh, campuses, having gender-neutral toilets just as an acknowledgement of where we are with the conversation? Yes, I mean, it's, it's changing the forms that I have to fill in when I go to home affairs, changing, you know, making sure there's gender neutral bathrooms, making sure that you have change stations within within man toilet, within male toilets, you have tampon dispensers within male toilets, because some males do go through uh, periods. So those are the kind of things that puts out a stance that educates um, the rest of the country in terms of the plight of the LGBTQ plus. Okay, so I saw you nodding your head. I think there's something that you want to add there. So I think ultimately, you know, one of the things about um, um, being a member of the LGBTIQ community is that this is not a ghettoization, right? They are not humans somewhere out there and you are in the ghetto. Ultimately, when we are talking about human beings, we are talking about us as well. Um, so it's not even a matter about, you know, who's getting married, who's allowed to get married and who's not. Mm -hmm. It goes way beyond that, right? Whether we talk about the issues of vaccine access, whether we talk about issues of inequality, whether we talk about the environmental crisis, whether we're talking about homelessness and how this in particular affects members of the LGBTIQ community, you know, these are all things that we should be tapping into. It shouldn't be a segregated thing. It shouldn't be almost as if there is this classing of the other. And we should be careful about how we ghettoize it, you know, as if it is a uniquely, there's human beings and there's this group, the subset of humans who are also, you know. Mm -hmm. We exist as full human beings in this world impacted by the very same things that many other people are affected by beyond the idea of marriage equality, mm -hmm. right? And limiting rights to that, limiting rights to particular manifestations of violence, right? Um, can be quite limiting and ghettoizes, further pushes a subset of um, members of the LGBTI com community. Kogetso Mweti from Amandla.mobi and Leo Similani, who works in the fintech space. Let me thank you both for your time on News at Prime tonight.